Alice, so the overarching question here is how is this going to play out? Will the sanctions be enough to stop Putin or will the U.S. and its allies have to be more forceful in order to protect eastern Ukraine? For those answers and more, we are joined by Rose Gottemuller. She's an international studies lecturer at Stanford. She also used to be NATO's deputy secretary general. Thank you for being with us. Let's start with this uh, new tranche, as the president called them, of sanctions uh, from Biden that target those financial institutions and those oligarchs, this first salvo, is that going to deter Putin? It's a strong shot across the bow, Jessica. I think it's really important, for example, that the sanctions directed at the oligarchs are also directed at their children. The oligarchs have been sanctioned since 2014, the seizure of Crimea, but they've hidden their assets by handing them over to their children. And now that loophole is closed. So this is a strong message to the uh, Russian elites that there's no more games being played. This VEB bank, for example, this is Putin's favorite bank. It, it funds his pet projects, such as the Sochi Olympics. So mm. these are strong messages that these sanctions are going to count. So the Ukrainian president said today that he, what he'd like to see is escalating sanctions. So my question to you is, what would those look like? And from NATO's perspective, what else can it do to stop this Russian incursion? It's exactly what President Biden has in mind as well, escalating sanctions. And the next ones that will come about will be uh, much more serious. The banking and financing uh, structures in, in Russia in a big way will be hit. Sberbank, the big savings bank that a lot of Russians depend on for their, their family savings, that's going to be under, under sanctions. In addition to which, they're going to hit at high-tech industries through trade and export controls. So the in whole innovation economy in Russia is going to be endangered by the fact that they won't be able to get chips and, and microprocessors and other products coming from the United States and its allies. So these are going to be serious. So what card does Putin have in this? I mean, the way this is playing out in Russia is that this is NATO and American aggression. So what does he want and what can he get in order to, for us to avoid war in which he could also save face? He seems to want to turn the clock back to the Soviet days and reestablish the Soviet Union, uh, not only bringing Ukraine to heel, but also others. And he has succeeded in the case of Belarus because the strong man who controls Belarus needs Putin right now, Mr. Lukashenko. So, but he has this aspiration to, uh, to turn back the clock and it includes getting NATO to unstitch the enlargement that it undertook, bringing the Warsaw Pact countries, former Soviet allies into NATO ranks. So he really wants to turn back the clock. It's just not going to be possible. May I just say, too, his demand that somehow Ukraine demilitarize and be completely not only a, not a member of NATO, but unable to de defend itself is, is really egregious. So let me ask you this. How does this renewed solidarity that the U.S. now has, um, you know, that we see it with NATO, how does it change the specter of NATO and its allies, given that the former president at one point even discussed withdrawing from NATO, but now you have this very unified front? How does that change the way it's seen in the world now, and especially with Russia? It's remarkable the way Putin's actions have driven NATO countries even closer together. So it's exactly the opposite of what he wanted to achieve. And NATO, I think, now will be very uh, focused like a laser light on deterrence and defense. By the way, I want to stress defense. The president announced more NATO troops of, of the United States moving into the Baltic states. That's 800 troops. Compare that to the over 1,000, I'm sorry, 150,000 that Russia has ranged against uh, against Ukraine. So these are defensive actions, but uh, NATO is now standing strong, standing together to defend NATO's interests. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your insight and your expertise. Thank you.